in this lecture we are going to talk about the physiology of treatment in shock or we are going to consider the physiology behind the treatment options in different kinds of shock so far we have discussed shock the different stages of shock different types of shock and the different presentations of shock now uh, in this lecture um, we will basically talk about the different treatment options broadly we are not going into detail as we are just going to talk about a physiology point of view the treatment the physiology of treatment like how uh, the mechanism like how it will work how different treatment options will work in different types of shocks so basically to start with uh, the treatment options include the uh, replacement therapy the sympathomimetic uh, drugs and other therapies so one is one treatment option broadly is the replacement therapy another category is sympathomimetic drugs and another category is other kinds of therapies in which multiple options are present so to simplify the things in replacement therapy we simply replace the thing which is lost we simply replace the things which are lost if blood is lost we replace blood if plasma is lost we replace plasma if fluid is lost we replace fluids so in the replacement therapy we have options like blood and plasma so if it's a hypovolemic shock due to hemorrhage which is basically a hemorrhagic shock then ideally we should uh, replace this with bl uh, with blood with whole blood to correct the shock and if there is loss of plasma then we will should correct or replace the plasma to correct the shock depending upon the cause of the shock now sometimes blood may not be available and the plasma may not be available so we can replace some other things which are basically substitutes of the plasma which are different substitutes of the plasma so the characteristics of a good substitute for plasma should include large molecules which should no, not go, go out of the circulation now suppose for example if the heart starts pumping and the blood the heart starts pumping for example this is the heart this is pumping the blood into the circulatory system now blood is going into the body and it is returning back blood is going into the body and it is returning back blood is going into the body it is returning back to the heart this blood or this com some components of the blood should not go out of the circuit they should not go out of the circuit through the small small pores or the amount of fluid going out should be equal to the amount coming into the circuit so it should basically maintain the volume now this is an important uh, quality of the uh, substitute which is going to be used instead of plasma now another important thing is that the amount of electrolytes which should be present in the substitute which can be used instead of plasma in emergency conditions is that the, the electrolytes should be equal to the equal in the uh, dextrins or the amount of electrolytes in the um, in the in the substitute fluid should be just like that in the plasma the amount of potassium the amount of calcium the amount of sodium the amount of glucose in substitute fluid should be equal to the amount of these components in the plasma now one of the most important substitute of plasma is dextrin solution now the dextrin solution is basically a substitute for plasma it remains in the circulatory systems it remain in the circulatory system because it has larger particles it is larger particles it is obtained as a byproduct from bacterial culture it is obtained from bacteria and the larger larger particles basically remain in the circulation and through the small pores they are not going out and they contain proper electrolytes they contain proper electrolytes so when there is a shock due to plasma loss or due to blood loss or whole blood is not available in emergency then this solution can be used this is an ideal substitute for the plasma now other therapies other therapies other than the sympathomimetic drugs they include the emergency maneuvers like head down position whenever a patient is in shock the first thing to do is to uh, put the patient in head down position and the head should ideally be be 12 inches below the feet head should be ideally first thing uh, sorry uh, 12 inches below the feet and this is basically the first thing to do now this is very much useful in hemorrhagic and neurogenic shock this is very useful in hemorrhagic and neurogenic shock and will be less useful in other types of shock is blood replacing blood was important in hemorrhagic shock similarly uh, this position the head down position is also useful it basically increases the venous return towards the heart it increases the venous return towards the heart and decreases the blood flow towards the legs so more blood is available for circulation then oxygen is also a uh, therapy to consider it is most importantly considered in septic shock but it is mostly less use uh, less beneficial it is oxygen is not that much beneficial in normal shock like neurogenic shock or anaphylactic shock although it should be given uh, but is the main problem is the decrease in blood or the decrease in plasma which is led to the shock so giving oxygen will not be that much beneficial then uh, another important uh, important option and important treatment option is 
uh, glucocorticoids now glucocorticoids or corticosteroids they basically uh, they basically increases the strength of the heart they increases the strength of the heart they stabilize the lysosomes and they aid in the metabolism of glucose and they they may be uh, pretty useful in some kinds of shock they may not be useful in all kinds of shock but they may be useful in some kinds of shock depending upon the severity so for example in the the, the kind of shock in which uh, the, there is decrease in metabolism or in which we uh, want to stabilize the lysosomes or we want to strengthen the uh, heart so they may be used accordingly now another thing is sympathomimetic drugs and they include the epinephrine nor epinephrine there are a lot of other uh, drugs as well but these two are most important sympathomimetic drugs and they are most commonly used in neurogenic shock and anaphylactic shock because they are sympathomimetics they mimic the sympathetic system they mimic the sympathetic system so they are used when there is loss of sympathetic system when there is depressed sympathetic system which mostly occur in neurogenic shock now they also basically causes vasoconstriction they causes vasoconstriction so they are also useful in anaphylactic shock in which histamines basically causes vasodilation histamines causes vasodilation this is a vessel normally histamine will dilate this vessel and these uh, these drugs will again the again cause vasoconstriction so they will basically oppose the effects of histamine in anaphylactic shock so they are useful for in neurogenic shock in which there is basically depressed action of sympathetic system and they are they basically replace that system and they are useful in anaphylactic shock because uh, there is vasodilation due to release of histamines so they cause vasoconstriction and they counter the effect of histamines and they are not very useful in hemorrhagic shock now when when blood loss has occurred there is already there is already so much stimulation of the sympathetic system there is already so much stimulation of sympathetic system so they are not pretty much useful in hemorrhagic shock they are not pretty much useful in hemorrhagic shock now another important uh, thing which can be used in uh, as a treatment option which we may consider in other therapies is antibiotics antibiotics if you have watched the last lectures we discussed the septic shock and septic shock is basically due to infection and to treat the infection we need antibiotics so antibiotics also have a role in shock now there are a lot of therapies a lot of things to consider and this is not a simple thing we are just talking about the physiology of treatment like what is the rationale behind the treatment options we are not basically going into detail if we just start discussing epinephrine it will take so many hours and if we just start uh, start discussing the components of the plasma then uh, it will take few hours if we start discussing the uh, how to give oxygen or how to give uh, glucocorticoids which glucocorticoids to be given how much should be given in which condition should be should be given that will be a very big discussion so that is important from medicine point of view here we are just considering the physiology of treatment or how to how to counter the effects of shock so depending upon the cause of the shock we may either replace some things or we may aid sympathomimetic drugs if the blood if the shock is due to loss of blood or loss of plasma then we may use blood or plasma replacement to correct the shock if the plasma and blood are not available in emergency then we can use dextrin as well in plasma loss then some things uh, are uh, some other maneuvers can be used like head down position can be used in some kinds of shock like hemorrhagic shock or neurogenic shock and uh, oxygen may be used especially in septic shock in which um, there may be involvement of lungs but is otherwise less beneficial in hemorrhagic shock or other kinds of or neurogenic shock etc now glucocorticoids may be used they may be used in septic shock in which they strengthen the heart they stabilizes the lysosomes they aid in metabolism of glucose and epinephrine norepinephrine are specifically useful in neurogenic shock where uh, when there is depression of the sympathetic system then they come and aid the um, sympathetic system and then in the they are useful in anaphylactic shock in which there is release of histamines which basically causes vasodilation so they come and basically cause constriction and counter the effect of histamines and sympathomimetic drugs epinephrine or epinephrine are not very much useful in hemorrhagic shock because there is already so much sympathetic sympathetic action that their action, uh, their, their uh, administration will not be uh, helpful in hemorrhagic shock and finally in septic shock which is basically due to uh, a infection spread of infections in which bacteria or different kind of uh, infections occur and they spread throughout the body in that kind of shock antibiotics may be also uh, useful now there may be other uh, treatment options as well but these are the broad categories and that's all about the shock we have so far considered uh, different um, different types of shock different stages of shock and now finally we have concluded the lectures about the circulatory shock uh, with the this lecture which is basically the physiology of treatment in shock So that's all about it. Thanks a lot for watching the video.